Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the stacking tool within Lightroom Classic to help you quickly organize and group together photos when you're coming back from a shoot or a session where you've just got dozens or hundreds of different images and you're feeling totally overwhelmed in terms of how in the world I'm gonna get through all of these and rate them cull them down, decide what I want to edit, etc., etc., And that's where this stacking tool really comes in handy, either doing it manually or as I'll show you automatically, again, within Lightroom Classic. Now it is worth pointing out that this tool is only available in Lightroom Classic. It's not available in the cloud-based version of Lightroom. If you're not already familiar with the two different versions, I have included a link to the blog post below where I cover in depth all of the differences and pros and cons of each. So be sure to check that out. Otherwise, I do have a fair bit I wanna cover here on the stacking tool. So let's just jump on into Lightroom Classic and give it a look. So let's take a look at this recent example. I've got hundreds of photos from a recent outing, over 650 in fact. And when I imported those files into Lightroom Classic, I also went ahead and added them to an existing 2022 collection that I already have for the local park I'd like to visit. Between these most recent photos and the previous ones that I took a few weeks ago, that collection now has nearly 1,500 images. Needless to say, that is a lot, and it can feel pretty overwhelming when you sit down to start reviewing such a large group of new photos to rate them and decide which ones you actually want to edit, and so on. In a case like this, where I have multiple shots of similar compositions due to changing light, minor tweaks to the framing between shots, or has been the case these last two imports using high-speed burst to capture different patterns in water, I find it really helps to start grouping photos before I start doing anything else. Instead of creating countless numbers of collections for every little grouping of photos, I use stacks. Looking at this grid view of my 2022 Eagle Mountain collection in my Lightroom library, you can see I've already got some stacks created already, as indicated by the number icons in the upper left corner of some of the images. Not surprisingly, that number lets you know how many photos are included in a particular stack. To create a stack manually, simply select two or more of your images in the library grid or in the film strip down at the bottom of the screen, then right click and head to the stacking menu. There you'll see the option to group the selected photos into a stack. Once you do so, the stack's automatically created and collapsed down. So now instead of staring at multiple frames of the same composition, you just have one image shown. That image is on top of the stack. Think of a deck of cards. In this particular example, I just created a stack that includes a photo I've already fully edited, so I want to make sure it's on the top of the stack so I still see it when I scroll through this collection. Since I've already created the stack, I simply need to expand the stack, right click on the photo I want on the top, go back to the stacking menu, and then select move to the top of the stack. Now when I collapse that stack back down, that edited photo will remain on top. If you didn't catch that, to expand the stack, all I had to do was select the photo or the stack, and then click on the stack number in the upper left corner to expand it out. You can use that trick to expand or collapse the stacks as many times as you need. Now, if you wanna control which photos on top as you create the stack, simply highlight all your applicable images, but make sure the one you want on top is the primary selection is indicated by the slightly stronger highlighted box around it. Now when I create this new stack, that primary selection will be automatically placed on the top of the stack. So that's how to do it manually, but if you've got hundreds of new photos like I have here, creating stacks manually can still be quite time consuming. That's where the auto stack tool comes in. Before I show this, however, it's important that you understand that the auto stacking feature does not take into account image selections. It'll be applied to the entire collection or folder you're working in. For this reason, I strongly recommend you only use this tool immediately after you import a large number of photos. So why is that so important? Well, as you just saw, I already have stacks I created from the shots I took a few weeks ago. If I were to run auto stacking now, since they're in the same collection, it would override all the stacks I already created. That's obviously not what I want. Thankfully, since I just imported my new photos yesterday, all I need to do is go to my catalog, previous import option, and select that. Now I can run auto stacking on only my new images without messing up the existing stacks I created. It's worth noting you only have to worry about this in overriding existing stacks you've created if you imported new photos into an existing collection or folder like I did here. Anyways, now that I'm on previous import, I can right click on any of the images, go to the stacking menu once more, and click on auto stack by capture time. As you can see, this tool will create stacks based on how much time passed between each photo. 
By making that interval larger or smaller, you can see in real time how many stacks will be created and how many individual photos won't be included in the stack at all. Before I do this though, I like to make my grid thumbnails as small as possible as that little stack count badge will show up on images as you adjust the time interval. That helps me home in on an interval that's a good balance between grouping photos appropriately without being too aggressive or too loose with the interval timing. Now, with the recommended value of one minute between stacks, I can see that I've got a large group of similar photos here that are in a group of 65 or a stack of 65. That's larger than I would like, so that's where I can start getting an idea of do I need to increase or decrease of interval time to get a better stacking of the photos I took. Now these photos are split into groups of nine. In this particular case, that works exactly as I'd like because these happen to be focus stack images I took using the autofocus stacking feature on my Canon R5. I have that mode on the camera set to take nine consecutive images back to back with different focal points to create a focus stack. So now that I'm seeing that those are in stacks of nine, it means I've at least for those images gotten an interval set at an appropriate time to create logical groups of images. Sidebar, if you're not familiar with focus bracketing, don't worry about that for now. That's its very own tutorial. That is a whole separate topic. Now in this particular outing, I also took a ton of photos of gentle waves that were rolling in along the lakeshore using the high speed burst on my camera. I know for a fact that I fired off dozens of shots multiple times within a few seconds each time. So I'm gonna cancel out of the auto stack tool, scroll down to where I took those photos, and then reopen auto stacking to see how change in the interval impacts the stacks for those as well. At the end of the day, it basically comes down to trial and error and becoming familiar with your different shooting scenarios to understand which interval is gonna work best for any given set of imported photos. You can see here that I have all of these water shots in one giant stack of 164 frames. If I wanted to make that smaller, again, I can tweak the interval to get that whittled down. The other thing you look at to help guide you as you're setting this interval is it'll also tell you how many stacks would be created and how many images would be unstacked in the lower left here. So I'm seeing that I would have 75 stacks, 46 unstacked. So I probably want to go ahead and increase this interval a little bit. Uh, let's just try 45 seconds and see that that takes me to 53 stacks and only 16 images unstacked. So for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and select that and get my stacks created. And immediately you can see a big difference in terms of what I'm looking at on screen. Let me make my thumbnails bigger again. With that done, I no longer have to scroll through hundreds of photos to see the different compositions I took. It's a lot less overwhelming to decide which set I want to start working on, that I want to start reviewing, rating images, editing, et cetera, et cetera. And it's far less cluttered, for lack of a better way to put it. To further illustrate that point, looking at the image count value in the lower left of my Lightroom window, you can see it's now showing me 69 photos of the original 66 that were last imported. Instead of scrolling through more than 650 images, I now only have to look through roughly 69 or 70 images to get a feel for the different compositions I captured. To start reviewing and rating the photos, I just have to expand individual stacks. Be sure to click on the stack first, otherwise your view may jump around a little bit. And as one or more stacks are expanded, that counter in the lower left of the window changes accordingly. So now instead of showing 69 photos, it's showing that there are 74 of the 666 photos. If I expand another stack here, that jumps further to 82. You can also go into the stacking menu to expand all stacks at once with a single click or collapse them all back down with one click. Now, if you do come across a stack that's bigger than you'd like, you can expand it, highlight a subset of the images within the stack, and then use the split stack option to split it into two smaller stacks. Again, very similar to a deck of cards. So now instead of having one stack of 63 images, I've split this into two stacks, the first stack being eight images, and then now a new stack that's 55 images. Now it is important to note that the last image you have highlighted is not the end of the new stack that you're splitting out. It's the beginning of the remaining stack from the original stack, if that makes sense. 
So if I wanted to take this remaining 55 and split it further, I would simply make sure I'm only selected on the first image of that remaining stack. And let's say I wanted to split this into a stack of nine images. I would actually have to highlight 10 because that'll include the first nine in the new stack that gets split out. And then that 10th image will represent the start of the remaining stack. So again, you can see now I have stack that is one of nine, all the way up to nine of nine, and the remaining images make up a stack of 46 files now. You can also still manually add or remove photos from the automatically created stacks, and you can still change the top photo that acts as the thumbnail, as it were, for any given stack. Just because you're using auto stacking doesn't mean you're giving up any of the additional controls to modify masks or create additional ones manually. So I've talked to a couple people recently that were saying they were just feeling completely overwhelmed because they just went out and shot a bunch of wildlife or they've been along a coastline and shot a lot of seascapes and things like that where you're using a lot of high frame rate burst modes and just getting dozens and dozens and hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of photos in a relatively short amount of time and just feeling completely overwhelmed by that. As the saying goes, the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time, and this stacking tool within Lightroom Classic really goes a long way towards helping you break things down into those bite-sized chunks so that you don't feel quite as overwhelmed when you're sitting down and importing all those images and realizing that now you gotta go through all of them all at once. As always, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, turn on the bell notification so you know when I release new videos going forward. And if you really want to help support the channel, you can use the thanks button down below to make a small contribution to support me directly, which would be extremely appreciated. Or you can also use any of the affiliate links that I've included in the description below to sign up for software subscriptions or make purchases. And by doing so, I'll get a small little bit of a commission off of each sale at no additional cost to you. Of course, however you choose to support the channel, it's always appreciated. Very grateful for everybody that views, thanks, likes, comments, etc, etc. And with that, thanks for watching as always, and until next time, take care.